Today I'm going to demonstrate why it's easier and more accurate to weigh out your water than it is to measure it out in containers such as these, which measure in quarts and pints and ounces. What I have here are two different quart cups of different brands, and I have the same amount of water. And I'm going to measure out one pint or 16 fluid ounces of water. And I have this on a scale that's been leveled, and we'll see how much water there is, how much that, water, that pint of water weighs. Now, I've tinted this with food coloring to make it easier to see, and we'll bring this right up to the 16 ounce mark. And if you see the numbers, they're moving. Every drop of water makes a difference, so that's how accurate the scale is. It's reading to the five ten thousandths of a pound. And this is just an ordinary laboratory bench scale. It's not very expensive. So here we have 16 fluid ounces, or one pint of water, and the scale reads 0 0.9920 pounds. Now what's interesting is a pint does not weigh a pound. A pint weighs 1.0425 pounds because a pint is one eighth of a gallon and a gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. So a true pint of water would weigh more than a pound, but we have a little bit less than a pound. So right now this particular container, which we believe to hold a pint, isn't really holding a pint of water. Now if you always use this one particular container, then maybe that's not such a big deal. However, if you have a variety of containers like I do, let's see what happens when we put that water into a different container, a different brand, or it could be the same brand. There's variations in, in others simply because the scales are printed on the containers and they're not terribly accurate. So I have to first zero out the weight of the, the cup itself, so I'm not recording the weight of the cup. And I'll put this water into this new container. And a little bit of water is stuck to the inside of the container, so we're not going to get everything there. We're going to be five ten thousandths of a pound short. But what's important to see is that we haven't even come up to the line. We're still short, yet it's the same amount of water. And just to demonstrate that, I'm going to put it back in the original container. Zero it out. Every container weighs a little bit different, so it's important to zero the weight of the container out as well. And there, we're back to 16 ounces according to this. Both containers are, are inaccurate, and neither are accurate relative to each other. So had I relied on these containers, I would not really know how much water I'm putting in. I'm guessing. And when you guess, you don't know what you're going to get out of your concrete. Now, these differences are very small, and it's relatively academic. But keep in mind, this is one pint of water, or roughly one pint of water. One pound of water is enough, perhaps, to make a small sample of concrete, maybe roughly 12 pounds of concrete, which is good for a color sample. But if I was basing a new color formula on a small 12 pound sample, and I had to scale that up to a full kitchen, and that full kitchen perhaps used 1,200 pounds, that error gets magnified by 100 times. So you can see why it's very important to be as consistent as possible and as accurate as possible, especially when you're developing new colors.